على الكتاب والسنة واتباع السلف الصالح. So we begin by praising Allah, sending peace and salutations upon His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then to proceed, ikhwani fillah, we are continuing with the book of Al Imam Al Barbahari rahimahullahu ta'ala and we are taking the point which is point number 23 in his book where he says wal iman bi anna al jannata haqqun wan nar haqq wa makhluqatan al jannatu fi samaa al sabi'ati saqfuha al 'arsh wan nar tahta ard al sabi'ati al sufla وهما مخلوقتان قد علم الله تعالى عدد أهل عدد أهل الجنة ومن يدخلها وعدد أهل النار ومن يدخلها لا تفنيان أبدا لا تفنيان أبدا هما ما أبقاء الله تبارك وتعالى أبد الآبدين في دهر الداهرين. So the Imam Al-Barbahari Rahimahullah Ta'ala He says And to believe That the paradise is true And the hellfire is true And that they are both Two creations And that the Jannah Is in the seventh heaven And its roof is the Arsh The throne of Allah And the fire is beneath the seventh earth and they are both created and Allah alone knows the number of the people of paradise and who will enter it and he alone knows the number of the people of the hell fire and who will enter it they meaning paradise and hell they will never cease to exist they will remain forever with the eternal existence of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so my brothers and sisters, among the pillars and the fundamental pillars of Iman is to believe in the last day and everything that takes place and everything that will occur on that day as is mentioned in the book and in the Sunnah and from what is mentioned is the Jannah and the Nar, the Paradise and the Hellfire the believers they will be in paradise a place which is prepared for the righteous whilst the disbelievers they will be in the fire of jahannam and these two are the homes of recompense so this life is a life of action a life of doing and the hereafter is a life of repayment based upon our deeds so whoever doesn't believe in paradise and the fire, then he's a disbeliever and his iman is deficient. And it is obligatory to believe that the Jannah and the Jahannam, the Nar, they are everlasting. They are in existence right now. They have already been created. And Allah has created them in such a way and has given them quali uh, characteristics and qualities such that they will last forever once they are created they are going to last forever and they will never come to an end concerning the jannah then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uiddat lil muttaqin it is for the people of taqwa and the righteous ones as for the fire of jahannam then allah says uiddat lil kafirin it is for the disbelievers <clears throat> and the statement of the Imam where he says Al Jannatu Fis Sama is Sabiati wa Sakfuha al Arsh that paradise is in the seventh heaven and its roof is the Arsh, the throne of Allah. This is as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that indeed there are one hundred levels in paradise which Allah has prepared for those people who engage in jihad fi sabilillah and the distance between every degree is like the distance between the heavens and the earth 
So if you ask Allah to ask Allah, then ask Him to admit you into Al Firdaus. Don't just ask for Jannah, ask for Al Firdaus. For it is the highest or the peak of the Jannah, and above it is the Arsh of Ar Rahman. From it gush forth the rivers of Jannah. And the statement of the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala. He says, قَدْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَدَدَ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ يَدْخُلُهَا وَأَدَدَ أَهْلِ النَّارِ وَمَنْ يَدْخُلُهَا Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in his eternal knowledge how many people are going to enter into Jannah and how many people are going to enter into the fire. And my brothers, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, and he created everything, then he decreed. And we mentioned last lesson last week when we spoke about the angels. When the angel, he comes and he says, Oh Allah, when the child is in the womb of the mother, and he says, Oh Allah, it's a mixed drop of fluid. Oh Allah, it is a clot. Oh Allah, it is a mudgha, it is a lump of flesh. And then the angel asks Allah four questions. Oh Allah, is he going to be male? Is he going to be female? Oh Allah, is he uh, going to be righteous? Or is he going to be from the losers? So this has already been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And paradise and the hellfire will never ever come to an end. Today, bi idhnillahi al-kareem, I want to go into detail about the description of Jannah and then next week insha'Allah or the next lesson then we will go into detail concerning the description of Jahannam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi uh, which is reported by Al-Imam Al-Bukhari that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that Allah says I have prepared for my righteous slaves that which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and that which has never crossed the mind of any human being. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, recite if you wish, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ That no person knows what is hidden for them of joy, as a reward for what they used to do. Nobody knows. You can't even imagine it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next few ayat, He says, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا كَمَنْ كَانَ فَاسِقًا لَا يستعود. Allah says, is the one who is a believer, like the one who is a fasiq, like the one who is a disbeliever who turns away, Allah says there's no way that they are equal. And then Allah says, أَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ جَنَّةُ الْمَأْوَىٰ نُزُلًا بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ As for those who believe and they do righteous good deeds, for them is gardens as an entertainment for what they used to do. And then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He speaks about the fasiqoon, those people who turned away. My brothers, the delights of Jannah, they are far greater than the pleasures of this world. And the pleasures of this world, they are nothing in comparison to the Jannah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in a hadith reported by Imam Al-Bukhari, a space the size of a whip in paradise is better than this world and all that it contains. A whip is very thin. It's not something which occupies a massive amount of space. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the space of that in Jannah, just a tiny amount of Jannah, is better than the world and everything that it contains. Now, in our lives we have luxuries, but there are people who enjoy luxuries far greater than anything that we have in our lives. The rich and the powerful, they can have virtually whatever they like. And yet, a tiny space in Jannah, is better than this world and everything in it. Every single thing in it of joys and of delights and of blessings, of luxuries. They pale in comparison to that of the Jannah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the entry into Jannah as being the great success. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ Allah says, so whoever has been saved from the hellfire and he enters into Jannah, then indeed he has been successful. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ What is the life of this world except for just a little bit of enjoyment and deception? It's just deception. It's here and it just passes away. Just like the sun is out one minute and then it passes away and the night comes. This is the reality of this world. And obedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama this is what's going to get us into Jannah, my brothers, bi idnillahi ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّةٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah says, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, they are the ones who are going to be admitted into gardens underneath which rivers flow to live therein. No death, they're going to live therein forever. And that is the great success. So who then, my brothers, will enter into Jannah? Who are the people of Jannah? First and foremost, Jannah is for the people of At-Tawheed. Jannah is for the people who worshipped Allah and they didn't associate or ascribe any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way, shape or form. They were a people who made their salah for Allah. They made their sacrifice for Allah. They made their living for Allah. They made their dying for Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say indeed my prayer and my sacrifice, my living and my dying, they are for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And so the people of At-Tawheed, they are the people of the Jannah. As for them, how are they going to be when they get to Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا The people who had taqwa, they're going, to, they're going to be led to paradise in groups. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا And when we spoke about the sirat, I think it was last lesson or the lesson before, we spoke about how it is thinner than a hair and it is sharper than the sword. And we spoke about Allah says, We're going to save the people of taqwa. In this ayah Allah says the people of taqwa, they're going to be led to Jannah in groups. And so we see that taqwa of Allah is key. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَدْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ Until when they reach it and their gates are going and its gates are going to be opened for them, the keepers, meaning the angels of the Jannah, they're going to say سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ They're going to greet them and they're going to say Peace be unto you. You have done well, so enter to live forever. Imagine hearing that, subhanAllah. Imagine hearing when you see the sun bought just overhead, when you see the children turn grey-headed because of that which they are witnessing, when you see every pregnant woman and every pregnant animal aborting its load, and the nursing mother forgetting about her child because of the terrors on that day. And you see the fire of Jahannam, تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْظِ It almost bursts up with fury. Imagine then being told on that day, enter into Jannah to live in peace, you're going to abide therein forever. If that was all you heard, that would be enough. If there, was no ble- if there was no other blessing in Jannah except that you didn't enter into Jahannam, that would be enough. The people would say, Alhamdulillah, we've been saved from that at least. That is enough as a success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
جنات عدن يدخلونها ومن صلح من آبائهم وأزواجهم وذرياتهم والملائكة يدخلون عليهم من كل باب سلام عليكم بما صبرتم فنعم عقب عقب الدار gardens of Eden underneath which rivers flow they're going to enter them those who are righteous from um, and they're going to enter them and also those who are righteous from amongst their fathers and their wives and their children and their angels are going to come up, up onto them from every gate and they're going to say salamun alaykum for that you have persevered in patience excellent is that indeed as a final home my brothers when we talk about the jannah let's make this very very clear I do not deserve Jannah according to my deeds alone. You do not deserve Jannah based upon your deeds alone. The greatest of all of the children of Adam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the same thing about himself. He said the good deeds of one of you will not enter, enter him into paradise. Meaning that it's not going to be enough just based on your deeds. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, not even you. He said, not even me unless Allah bestows his mercy upon me. Even the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he needs the mercy of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. When we are talking about the Jannah, then we need to speak about what is known as Al-Qantara, which is a bridge which is just before the Jannah. It's a bridge on which the Ahlul Jannah, they're going to gather and then any little disagreement, any little issues that they had between themselves, they're going to clarify them. They're going to clear their hearts. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a hadith reported by Imam al-Bukhari, he said the believers will be saved from the fire and then they will be kept on a bridge between paradise and hell. They will settle their accounts with one another for any wrongs that existed between them in this world until they are purified and cleansed and will be permitted to enter into paradise by the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam each one of them will know his place in paradise better than he knew his dwelling in this world you know from this masjid how am I going to get home and you know the route and if somebody was to take you in front of your house you would know that like the back of your hand or better the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that when the people of Jannah enter into Jannah, they're going to know their place in Jannah better than they knew their place in the world. The first one to enter Jannah is the blessed Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the first Ummah is the blessed Ummah of that blessed Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Muslim reported from Anas radiallahu an that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, I will come to the gate of paradise and ask for it to be opened. And the gatekeeper will ask, Who are you? I will say Muhammad. And the, gate will, the gatekeeper will say, I was ordered not to open this gate for anyone else before you. Bukhari and Muslim have that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, we are the last, meaning we're the last nation. All of the other nations have preceded us in terms of time. We are the last, but we will be the first on the day of resurrection. We will be the first of mankind to enter into paradise. This next hadith and the next ahadith, we're going to talk about the 70,000 who will enter into Jannah بغير hisab, without any accountability. They will literally just enter into Jannah and their deeds won't even be looked at. Meaning they won't be questioned. No accountability. Abu Huraira narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Hadith Imam al-Bukhari, The first group to enter into Jannah, they're going to be as beautiful as the moon. They will not spit, nor will they blow their noses, nor will they excrete. Their vessels will be of gold, their combs will be of gold and silver, their incense, they will have a fine smell, and their sm sweat will be of musk. Each one of them will have two wives, the marrow of whose leg bones will be visible through their flesh because of their extreme beauty. If you saw a woman 
on the street and you could see the marrow of her leg, you would probably freak out. You'd run a mile. You'd say there's something going on. This is not normal. But on that day, in a way which only Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala knows, those women will be so beautiful. And that is a sign and an indication of their immense beauty that the marrow of her leg will be visible. And only Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala knows how that is. And then the Messenger of Allah said there will be no differences or hatred among them. Their hearts will be as one and they will glorify Allah morning and evening. A ziyada now, additional information. Bukhari has that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said 70,000 of my ummah will enter into paradise. The first of them will not enter until the last of them does so. And their faces will be like the full moon. They're going to enter in one big go, one group. In another narration, as Imam Ahmed reported, he said, I have been given 70,000 of my nation who will enter paradise without being called to account. Their faces will be like the full moon and their hearts will be like one heart. I asked my Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gave me, along with each one of them, 70,000 more. So each one of the 70,000, with each one of that 70,000, there will be 70,000 more. And now there's a ziyada on this hadith as well, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, he said on the authority of Abu Umama radiallahu an, my Rabb has promised me 70,000 of my nation would enter paradise without being to call to account and without being punished. And with each one of the 70,000, 70,000 more. And now we get to the ziyadah. We've already heard these details. But this is the, you know, this is the bit that gives me a new hope. Because we say with each one of those 70,000, 70,000 more, 49 million or 4.9 billion, or whatever the number is. I don't have a calculator here right now. But the point is it's massive. But we say that, subhanAllah, we're sinners. We fall short. Scholars. Hundreds of thousands of companions, the salaf of this ummah. We, where do we compare to these people? Subhanallah. Those people will be far ahead of us. So we think, ah, maybe you know. Now I feel like I'm not going to be from that seventy thousand. Although I really want to be from that seventy thousand. But the ziyada in this hadith, the additional detail, it should give every single one of us hope. So he said with. Each one of those 70,000, 70,000 more. And then three handfuls of my Lord. Three handfuls of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the amount. That three handfuls of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And one of the narrators when he narrated this hadith, he would do this. He made an action like this. Meaning three handfuls of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to admit them into Jannah. How many people will Allah tabarak wa ta'ala grasp in his three handfuls in a manner which befits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is our creator tabarak wa ta'ala who is going to roll up the heavens and the earth and he's going to hold them in one hand subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to say, Ana al-Malik, I am the king. Where are the kings of the earth? And so if he grasps the heavens and the earth, then three handfuls, inshallah, we have a chance. Bi idnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from those people. But they have a description, so we have to tick the boxes. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that I was shown the nations who came before. And I saw a prophet come past with a group of his people and another with a band of his people and another with only 10 a prophet who is supported with revelation and there's more people in this masjid right now than that prophet had following following him and believing in him in his entire life and there's more of us here subhanallah and another one with only five and another one who is going to be alone. Another one who is going to be alone. There's nobody else with him. Then I looked and I saw a large crowd of people. 
And I asked, O Jibreel, are these my Ummah? And he said, no, these are your Ummah. He said, look at the horizon and there is a massive multitude of people. He said, these, they are your Ummah. And 70,000 from of them, they are not going to be held to account, nor are they going to be punished. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked why. Then the description came. هُمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ They are not, they are the ones who don't ask for رُقْيَةً وَلَا يَكْتُوُونَ They don't do cauterization. وَلَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ They don't believe in omens. وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they have taqwa and they have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars mention, why are those three descriptions given? The cauterization, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he disliked it for his ummah. In another one, he said they don't ask for ruqya. If somebody comes and I've got a headache and he comes and he performs the ruqya on me without me asking him, that's absolutely fine. Like Jibreel did to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's absolutely fine. But for me to go out and ask somebody else and say, Brother, can you make ruqya upon me, please? This diminishes the perfection of my tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the end of the hadith is, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ That they have full, perfect, complete tawakkul, trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That that person, there's nothing special about him. I have the Qur'an, I will read it, I will make dua, and my connection is directly with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And that's why, ikhwani fillah, it's not recommended for you to seek ruqya from somebody else. And I say to you, if you're suffering and you can recite, read yourself and have this difficulty for 10, 20, 30 years, and you might get better yourself, and inshallah you will. It's better for you to be patient, hoping to be from those 70,000 people. We've spoken a lot about what happens outside of Jannah and the numbers of Jannah, but let's now talk about the description of Jannah. That the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we've already taken this, that Allah has said in a hadith Qudsi, that I've prepared for my righteous worshippers such things that no eye has ever seen. You've never seen the, anything like the palaces of Jannah. You've never seen anything like the sights of Jannah. When you go, you're going to stand. Some of the scholars, they mention, although there's no real narration which backs this up, but there's nothing that says it's not true. They say a man, when he goes and he looks at his wife in Jannah, he's going to stand for 40 years and be blown away by her beauty. He's just going to stand and be amazed for 40 years because she's so amazingly beautiful. And somebody might come and say, 40 years is a long time, but we're dealing with eternity here. There's no, there's no death, there's no sleep, there's no getting tired. You're not going to get hungry while you look at your wife. Nothing, subhanAllah. 40 years, ikhwani fillah. And so that which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard. You've never heard the, the sound of your wife singing to you in Jannah. You've never heard it, I promise you. You've never heard anything like that. And the wives of Jannah will sing to their husbands. And you've never heard the sounds of the rivers of Jannah flowing by. You've never heard it. And that which has not crossed the mind of any individual. When you think of a river, when you think of a tree, don't think they're going to be the same as they are in Jannah. Ibn Majah, he has, and there's some difference of opinion on the authenticity of this hadith. But he says... It is sparkling light, aromatic plants, a lofty palace, a flowing river, ripe fruit, a beautiful wife, and abundant clothing, in an eternal abode of radiant joy, in beautiful and soundly constructed high houses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا when you look, meaning in Jannah, you're going to see delight and a great dominion. You're going to see delight and a great dominion. Paradise has eight gates. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Paradise has eight gates and one of them is called Ar-Rayyan 
through which none will enter except for the one who observes fasting. There are different levels of Jannah, my brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Unzur kayfa faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. Look how in the life of this world, we have favoured some of them over others. People are of different levels in terms of what they have in this world. Allah says, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ دَرَجَاتٍ وَأَكْبَرُ تَفْطِيلًا And the Akhira is greater in terms of degrees and greater in terms of preference. And we've already mentioned that hadith, that paradise has 100 levels which Allah has preferred or prepared for the people who do jihad fi sabilillah and the distance of each level is like the distance between the heavens and the earth so when you ask Allah, ask him for al-firdaus which is the highest part, the middle part of Jannah above it is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibn al-Qayyim he mentions an amazing statement he says that the purest and the most perfect of the creation of Allah is his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why it is the highest part of the creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above it it's the closest thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore the next best thing is the thing which is closest to the throne and that is the Jannah of Al-Firdaus and then the furthest thing from that is the worst and that is the depths of the fire of Jahannam a woman came Um Haritha and she came to the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her son Haritha had been killed in the battle of Badr an arrow had struck him and he had died she said O oh, messenger of Allah you know how dear Haritha was to my heart if he is in paradise I'm not going to weep for him. But if he's not, then you're going to see what I'm going to do. Meaning if you give me glad tidings that he is in Jannah, I'll hold myself because he's in Jannah. Look how strong their Iman was, subhanAllah. But if you tell me he's not in Jannah, I'm not going to be able to hold myself. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, is there only one paradise? Rather there are many levels and he is in Al-Firdaus the highest. And the people are going to see the people of Jannah above them. The Messenger وسلم, has said the people of paradise will look at the people living above them, living in the chambers above them, the same way that the people look at the brilliant star shining far away in the horizon, in the east or in the west, because of their superiority over them. Those people who are above you in Jannah, you're going to see them twinkling like stars because of their superiority. Again, my brothers, when you aim, aim high. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, when you want Jannah, ask for Firdaus. The companion said, O Messenger of Allah, those stars shining in the sky, are they the dwellings of the Prophets? Those stars that we're going to see shining in the distance is that where the prophets are the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said no by the one in whose hand is my soul they are for the men who believed in allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we have a chance brothers we have an opportunity the soil of jannah what's the soil of jannah made from abu dhar radiyallahu an he said that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said I entered paradise where I saw lights of pearl and its soil was musk. I saw lights of pearl and its soil was musk. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in another narration he said it's a fine white powder of pure musk. In another narration the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said when he was asked by the companions, what is paradise, what is Jannah built from? He said, bricks of gold and silver and mortar of fragrant musk. Its pebbles are pearls and rubies and its soil is saffron. Whoever enters it is blessed with joy and he will never be miserable. He will remain there forever and he will never die. 
His clothes will never wear out and his youth will never fade away. Ikhwani Fillah, look at that as a description of Al-Jannah, SubhanAllah. You know, if that's all we had as a description from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahi, it would be enough. Bricks of gold and silver, mortar of fragrant musk, whoever is enters it, he's blessed with joy, he will never be, he will never uh, be sad or anxious, he will never die, his youth will never fade, his clothes will never wear out. This is a description, SubhanAllah. What about the rivers of Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّةٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Give glad tidings to those who believe and do righteous good deeds that they are going to have gardens underneath which rivers flow. In Surah Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The description of the Jannah which the muttaqoon, the people of taqwa, again we hear taqwa, people of taqwa, they have been promised is that in it are rivers of water, the taste and the smell of which they do not change. Rivers of milk of which the taste it does not change. Rivers of wine which are delicious to those who drink. Rivers of clarified honey and for in therein they have every kind of fruit and forgiveness from their Lord. And then Allah says are they who are going to be given all of this? Are they like those who are going to dwell live forever in the fire and they're going to be given to drink boiling water so that it cuts up their bowels and their insides? They're not the same. لا يستوون. As Allah says, they're not the same. There's a massive difference. There is the river of al kawthar in the Jannah, which is a river which is specifically gifted to, the, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah said, Whilst I was walking in paradise, I saw a river whose banks were domes of hollowed out pearls. And I asked, what is this, O Jibreel? He said, this is al kawthar which your Lord has given to you. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar And we know that short surah. What about the mansions and the palaces of Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ جَنَّةٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٌ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah says that He has promised the believing men and the believing women gardens underneath which rivers flow and beautiful mansions in gardens of Eden but the greatest bliss is the good pleasure of Allah that is the supreme success. وَمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ بِالَّتِي تُقَرِّبُكُمْ عِنْدَنَا زُلْفَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that your wealth and your children they do not bring you uh, close to us. And then Allah says إِلَّا مَنْ, إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ جَزَاءُ الضِّعْفِ بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَهُمْ فِي الْغُرُفَاتِ آمِنُونَ Allah says, except for the one who believes and does righteous good deeds, for that person he's going to have a double reward for what he used to do. And they're going to live in high dwellings in peace and security. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَكِنِ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ لَهُمْ غُرَفٌ مِّن فَوْقِهَا غُرَفٌ مَبْنِيَّةٌ تَجْرِي مِّن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Look at this description. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, for those people who had taqwa of their Lord, they're going to have chambers. And above them, there are chambers built high, underneath which rivers flow. The rivers are going to flow underneath these mansions of Jannah. How? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And look at the creation of man. With our limited intellect, with our limited imagination, you look at some of the things that are made and constructed by man in some parts of this earth and the person looks at them and he is amazed. He thinks, wow, that is amazing. And this is by the creation of man. What about a place which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created specifically to bring you pleasure, specifically to make you happy, specifically to reward you? And it's not limited by our limited intellects. It's not limited by our limited technology, our limited ability. It is a place which has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in paradise, there are dwellings whose inside can be seen from the outside. 
and the outside can be seen from the inside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared them for people who feed the hungry and they speak softly and gently and they fast continuously and they pray at night while the people are asleep. You want a pearl in Jannah, Ikhwani Fillah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the believer in Jannah, he's going to have a tent which is made out of a single hollowed out pearl. How big are the pearls of this world? You could fit them in your hand. He said that the believer, he is going to have a tent which is made of a single hollowed out pearl. It's going to be 60 miles long. 60 miles long. And in that place he's going to have a number of wives and he's going to visit them in turn. And none of those wives are going to see the others. It's so big. What about the trees of Jannah? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in Jannah there is a tree which the rider of a fast horse would need 100 years to pass underneath it. He's on a fast horse. He needs 100 years to pass underneath this tree. In another narration, in paradise there is a tree under whose shade a traveller could travel for 100 years and not reach the edge of it. In another narration, there is no tree in Jannah except that it has a trunk made of gold. These are the descriptions of the Jannah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam compare your happiness when you, for the younger brothers, I don't know what makes you guys happy, but think about the thing that makes you happy. Think about the thing that brings you the most amount of pleasure and the thing that it should be is earning the pleasure of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. You know, there's no harm in taking pleasure in the temporary things of this world. But the ultimate pleasure should be taking and seeking the pleasure of Allah. Seeking the pleasure of your parents, as long as it is in the obedience of Allah. This is goodness. Think about whatever it is. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, this world, this entire world. Think about all of the cars, all of the houses all of the planes and that, whatever it is, the nice clothes and the gold and the silver, the jewelry, the diamonds, whatever it might be. He said this world in comparison to the hereafter, meaning the pleasure that you feel within it, is similar to when one of you puts his finger in the sea, let him see when he takes it out what it returns with. Meaning that when you dip your water into the ocean, that drop of water that is on your fingertip, that's the world and everything that it contains. The ocean is the akhirah. There's absolutely no comparison. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّةٍ وَعُيُونَ Indeed, the righteous, they're going to be within gardens and springs. أُدْخُلُوهَا بِسَلَامٍ آمِنِينَ it's going to be said to them, enter in peace and security. And we're going to remove from their hearts any type of resentment that they have. So they're going to be brothers sitting on thrones facing each other. No fatigue is going to touch them, nor will they ever be removed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي ظِلَالٍ وَعُيُونَ وَفَوَاكِهَ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ كُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ The righteous, they're going to be among shade and springs and fruits, whatever they desire. Eat and drink comfortably for that which you used to do. For you brothers, the women of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَحُورٌ عِينٌ And they are going to be hoors with wide, lovely eyes. كَأَمْثَالِ الْلُؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ They're like preserved pearls. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ A reward for that which they used to do. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, he said in a hadith reported by Imam al-Bukhari, if a woman from the women 
of the people of paradise were to look at this earth, she would light up everything between it and she would fill it with her fragrance. The veil on her head is better than the world and everything in it. The veil on her head, forget her face and her eyes and the way that she's been created. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, as reported by Abu Hurairah, Hadith Sahih Bukhari, each man will have two wives from amongst the Hurul Ain. So if your wife doesn't allow you to get married in this world and you haven't got the ability, then don't worry, but in the line Jannah you'll have at least two wives. Like they, as Allah says, they are like rubies and pearls. In the description of these women, Allah wa ta'ala says that they are like rubies and pearls. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the believer in Jannah, he's going to be given such and such strength, meaning to fulfill his desires. He's going to be given such and such strength for fulfilling his desires. And they said, O Messenger of Allah, is he really going to be able to do all of that that you're saying? And then the Prophet ﷺ said he will be given the strength of 100 men. So the man in fulfilling his desires, he's not going to be the man in fulfilling his desires, then he's not going to be the way we are in this world. Rather, he will be given the strength of 100 men. Now, the sisters may ask, well, what is there for us? These Hurul Ain are so beautiful. They are a creation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And he has called them beautiful, compared them to rubies and pearls. And we are not rubies and pearls. And so the scholars, one thing that they mention, Ikhwani Fillah, is that the believing women, they will be even more beautiful than the Hurul Ain. They will be even more beautiful than these Hur, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Because this is a creation which is in Jannah. And they have never endured a day of this world. But the believing women, they have fasted. And they have guarded their modesty and they have prayed and they have done their best to worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And so they will be the queens of the Hur of Jannah. The women of this world will be the queens of the Hur in Jannah. Now the question is, what is there if a woman was not married in this world? If she was married, then inshallah she will be in Jannah with her husband. What if she didn't get married? Or what if her husband was not admitted into Jannah? Our Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he mentioned the ayah in Surah Fussilat, وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ And you will have therein whatever your souls desire. And you will have whatever you ask for. So he said, so if a woman is one of the people of paradise and she did not get married, or if her husband is not one of the people of paradise, when she enters paradise, there will be men who did not get married. And those men will have wives from amongst the Hur al Ain and the wives from amongst the people of the world as well if they wish. Similarly, with regards to the woman who did not have a husband, or who had a husband in this world, but he didn't enter into paradise. If she wants to get married, then inevitably she will have what she desires because of the general meaning of that verse. So I hope everybody understands bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. She will either get married if she wills to the men, one of the men from amongst the men of al-Jannah. And if she doesn't, then she will have whatever she wills bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. The markets of Jannah. Compare it to the bullring. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, he said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that there is a market to which the people will come every Friday. Then a wind will come from the northerly direction and it will blow on their faces and on their clothes and they will increase in beauty. 
a market, not where you go and you think I can't afford this and I can't afford that and this is too expensive, I have to save up for this. A market where the people are rude, no. This is a market where you go and you get whatever you will, whatever your heart desires and even that which your heart doesn't even know that it desires, you'll find it there. And when the men go out and the people go out and the wind blows on their faces from that northerly direction and their clothes, they increase in beauty. Then they're going to return to their wives who also will have increased in beauty. And then their wives are going to say to their husbands, by Allah, you have increased in beauty after you left us. And the men are going to say, and you too, by Allah, you have increased in beauty since you left us. The people every Friday are just going to keep increasing, increasing, increasing in their beauty. What about the best thing that the people of Jannah are going to be blessed with? The best blessing. What is it? The people of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That on that day, some faces, they're going to be shining and they're going to be radiant. And they are looking at their Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Imam Muslim has on the authority of Suhaib That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said When those who are deserving of Jannah will enter Jannah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say Do you want that I give you any more? The people will say Have you not brightened our faces? Have you not made us enter into paradise and saved us from the fire? Then the narrator said he, meaning Allah wa ta'ala, is going to lift the veil. Meaning lift the veil of his blessed face, his perfect face, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of all of the things that were given to them, nothing is going to be dearer to them than the sight of their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhwani fillah, these are some of the descriptions of the Jannah. And I want to mention briefly the hadith of the last man who is going to enter into Jannah for wallahi it's an amazing hadith and it is a hadith with so many benefits Ibn Masood radiallahu an he narrates on Imam Muslim he mentions this hadith this is the last person who enters into Jannah everybody else who's entered into Jannah and will enter into Jannah has already entered Jannah this is the last person who has the least reward in Jannah. Imam Muslim narrates, he records that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, the last to enter into Jannah would be a man who would walk once and he would stumble once and he would be burnt by the fire. Then when he gets beyond it, when he finally manages to come out of the fire of Jahannam, he's a person of Tawheed. Wallahi billahi tallahi if the people of shirk came with all of the good deeds, they're not going to be worth a single thing. Those who say that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is hadir and nadir and he has ilmul ghaib and they make dua to him and they make dua to the grave and they make tawaf around the grave and they call upon him and they call upon Abdul Qadir al-Jilani and other than that, they are going and it doesn't matter if his name is Muhammad, it doesn't matter if his name is Umar or if her name is Khadija or if her name is Aisha or if her name is Fatima or if his name is Ali. It does not matter if he made Hajj a hundred times, if he fasted 30 days of Ramadan for 75 years, if he died and he was upon shirk, he will be in the fire of Jahannam and he will not come out. So this person don't think it's those people. This person is a person of Tawheed, yet he was a person who committed sins and he fell short. And out of his justice, Allah wa ta'ala punishes him. So remember that. Then when this person, so he's been touched by the fire, he's entered into the fire. Then when he gets beyond it, he's going to turn to it. He's going to look at that fire and he's going to say, Blessed is he who has saved me from you. Allah has given me something which he has not given to anybody else in the later times or in the earlier times. Remember what I said, that the person when he enters into Jannah, that's it, khalas. Even if there was nothing in Jannah, if it was just an empty land, he'd say, Alhamdulillah, I have the best blessing in that I haven't been 
entered into that fire. Even though there's nothing else in Jannah, the fact that you've been saved from Jahannam is enough of a blessing. That man, when he's been in the fire, he's felt its punishment, and now he comes out, he's going to turn, he's going to say, Allah has given me something that he's not given to anybody else. He thinks he's the most blessed of the people. Then, because, he's, because, he's been saved. because he's come out of the fire of Jahannam. Then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, then a tree is going to be raised up for him. Just a tree. He's, he is, is out of the fire, but he's not in Jannah. Just a tree is going to be raised for him. Then he's going to say, Oh Allah, bring me closer to this tree so that I may take shelter in its shade and drink from its water. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, Oh son of Adam, if I grant this to you, if I grant this to you, you're going to ask me for something else. The man is going to say, No, oh Allah, no, my Lord. And he's going to promise that he's not going to ask for anything else. Allah, just let me go to that tree. I promise you I'm not going to ask for anything else. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said his Lord would excuse him because he sees something that he can't help desiring. This is uh, Allahu Akbar. This is the nature of the son of Adam. You see something and you want it. This is just why we have window shopping. <laughs> Subhanallah. People go there and they just want it. You see something, you want it. The eyes are the gateway to the soul and the heart. And you want the women as well. And you want the haram as well. So only look at that which is halal. Barakallahu feekum. So Allah says, He sees what He cannot help desiring. So He would bring him near to it. And He will take shelter in its shade and drink of its water. Afterwards, a tree which is more beautiful than the first would be raised up. And He would say, O oh Allah, bring me near this tree in order that I may drink of its water and take shelter in its shade and I will not ask for anything else after this. Allah will say, O oh son of Adam, if I bring you near to it, you might ask me for something else. He's going to say, O oh Allah, I promise you I'm not going to ask you for anything else. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, his Lord will excuse him. Because he would see something that he cannot help desiring. So he'd bring him near to it and he would enjoy its shade and drink its water. Then a tree would be raised for him at the gate of paradise. Not in. At the gate of paradise. More beautiful than the first two. He will say, oh my Lord, bring me near to it so I may enjoy its shade and drink from its water. And I shall not ask you for anything else. Allah will say, oh son of Adam. Did you not promise me that you would not ask me for anything else? And he will say, yes, my Lord, I did, but I will not ask you for anything else. His Lord would excuse him, for he sees something, the temptation of which he cannot resist. He, meaning Allah, will bring him near to it. And when he would bring him near to it, he would hear the voices of the people of Jannah. Because this tree now is at the gate of Jannah. So when he comes near that tree, he hears the voices of the people of Jannah. He would say, the man is going to say, Oh my Lord, let me go in. Oh Allah, admit me to it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Oh son of Adam, what is going to bring an end of your asking? What is going to bring an end to your requests? Will it please you? Will it make you happy? If I give you the whole world and everything alongside it, meaning the world and the world again, the man is going to turn to Allah and he's going to say, Oh my Lord, are you mocking me? And you are the Lord of the world. Allah wa ta'ala is going to say to this slave of, of, of his What's going to bring an end to your asking? What are you, why are you going to, when are you going to stop? Will it make you pleased if I give you the like of the world and everything in it? And again as well. And in one narration, Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu, he said the world and everything in it twice. And Abu, Sa Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, he said, Oh, Abu Hurairah. In fact, I heard the, I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa say, the world and everything in it, 
and the like ten times thereof. Ten times the world and everything in it. And so the man says, Oh Allah, my Lord, are you mocking me and you are the Lord of the worlds? Then Ibn Masood radiallahu and he laughed and he said, Why don't you ask me why I'm laughing? When Ibn Masood was narrating this to the people who were listening, he said, Why don't you people ask me why I am laughing? He said, In this way, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laughed when he explained this. And we asked the companions, O Messenger of Allah, why do you laugh? He said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to laugh. When he says that, when the man says, are you mocking me and you are the Lord of the worlds? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to laugh and he's going to say, I am not mocking you, but I have the power to do whatever I will. This is the last person, my brothers, to enter into the Jannah. And I want to end with just a couple of ayat, just to, just to set it up for us, bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ni'ma ajrul ami amilin. Excellent is the reward of the workers. My brothers, we have to work for this Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ending, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ The abrar, those people who are pious, righteous, they're going to be in delight. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ They're going to be on thrones and they're going to be looking. تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَضْرَةَ النَّعِيمٍ You're going to see on their faces the brightness of delight. يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ رَحِيقٍ مَخْتُومٍ They're going to be given to drink from this pure sealed wine khitamuhu misk the end of it the last of it is musk and we end with this ayah wa fi dhalika falyatanafasil mutanafisun so for this let every person who strives let him strive for this if you strive for something my brother strive for the jannah that's the ultimate success and we end and we say, Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannatu al-firdaus al-a'la. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannatu al-firdaus al-a'la. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannatu al-firdaus al-a'la. That means, O oh Allah, we are asking you for jannatu al-firdaus al-a'la. And we mentioned it three times. And we say, Allahumma ajirna min al-nar. Allahumma ajirna min al-nar. Allahumma ajirna min al-nar. Oh Allah, save us from the fire. And we said that three times. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, when a person asks Allah for Jannah three times, Jannah pleads with Allah and says, Oh Allah, admit him into Jannah. And when a person <coughs> seeks refuge from the fire, then Jahannam pleads with Allah and says, Oh Allah, save him from Jahannam. And so we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that he grants us Jannatul Firdaus Al A'la and he makes us from those seventy thousand people who enter into Jannah without any accountability and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves our necks and the necks of our mothers and fathers and our children and our relatives and our brothers and sisters from the fire of Jahannam. Ultimately Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala knows best. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun wa Salamun ala al Mursaleen. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ad. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wa jazakumullahu khairah.